Nearly 7 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's today, and almost two-thirds of them are women. That imbalance has never been fully explained, but new evidence uncovered just recently points to a hidden biological clue that could reshape how we understand women's risks. Now research has shown us something for the first time, giving this mystery a new lead. Alzheimer's doesn't strike evenly. Nearly two-thirds of people diagnosed are women. The idea that women on average live longer than men has long been offered up as an explanation for this overrepresentation. In other words, women live longer, therefore more cases, but the numbers resist such a simple answer. Studies show that even after age 80, when men and women survive at similar rates, women are still more likely to be diagnosed. That suggests there are deeper biological forces at play, and as metabolomics, the large-scale mapping of blood metabolites, has advanced, a pattern has come into focus. Sex matters. Certain biological markers linked to Alzheimer's risk only appear when data are split by men and women. Past work has shown that some metabolites like valine, glycine, and proline shifted in women at risk for Alzheimer's, but not in men hinting at vulnerabilities in how the female brain handles energy and amino acid metabolism. Other groups have found bile acids and neurotransmitter breakdown products tied to dementia risk, but again, often only in one sex and not in the other. This points to a broader theme. Alzheimer's may manifest differently on the molecular level between men and women, and nowhere is this more striking than in lipid metabolism. Lipids, the fats and fatty acids that make up membranes and fuel, aren't just calories. They're structural, signaling, and protective. Research shows women on average carry higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids such as DHA, a nutrient essential for brain membranes and synaptic function. That should be an advantage. But what happens when that advantage erodes? Estrogen has also thought to be part of the answer before menopause estradiol boosts the enzymes that convert plant-based precursors into long-chain omega-3s, effectively giving women a stronger capacity to enrich their tissues with DHA. After menopause, that machinery slows, leaving women more dependent on direct dietary intake of long-chain omega-3s like EPA and DHA. Taken together, the evidence reads like scattered witness statements, each hinting at sex-specific vulnerabilities, none tying the story together. Until now, a new study armed with high-resolution lipidomics may have finally cracked open the case, uncovering a biochemical pattern that's been in front of us all along, a pattern that could explain why women, more than men, shoulder the weight of this disease. The latest evidence comes from a team at King's College London, where they pulled plasma samples from participants across Europe, one-third with Alzheimer's, one-third with mild cognitive impairment, and a group of healthy controls. Instead of focusing on a handful of markers, they turned to lipidomics, high-resolution mass spectrometry capable of profiling hundreds of individual fats in the blood. The first layer of the analysis looked routine. Cholesterol, LDL, HDL, triglycerides, nothing shocking there. But once the lipids were mapped and clustered into modules, an evidence board of over 260 distinct species, the case took a turn. In men, the charts were flat. No consistent lipid pattern separated those with Alzheimer's from those without. But in women, the picture was completely different. 32 lipids shifted dramatically, and the pattern wasn't random. It carried a signature. Highly unsaturated lipids, the ones enriched with omega-3 fatty acids like DHA and EPA, dropped sharply. At the same time, more saturated and monounsaturated lipids crept upwards. Think of it as a biochemical fingerprint. In women with Alzheimer's, the protective fats were missing, replaced by stiffer, saturated ones, and the brain seemed to feel the consequences. Lower levels of these unsaturated lipids were tied to higher neurofilament light, a marker of axonal injury, and higher markers of astrocyte activation and inflammation. Cognitive scores followed the same pattern. The more omega-rich the lipids, the better the cognitive performance. The more saturated, the worse. This wasn't a cholesterol story either. The analysis showed the effects of these lipids weren't explained by LDL, ApoB, or total cholesterol alone. In other words, standard blood panels would miss this. The signature was deeper, buried in the composition of the lipidome itself. 
one more clue surfaced, lysophosphatidylcholines, or LPCs. These odd-sounding molecules act as carriers ferrying DHA across the blood-brain barrier using a special transporter that goes by the acronym MFSD2A. In women with Alzheimer's, the LPC module lit up, suggesting that the delivery system itself might be faltering, leaving the brain undersupplied. Taken together, the evidence builds a chilling picture. For men, the lipid landscape stays steady. For women, Alzheimer's comes with a collapse of unsaturated reserves, the very molecule sought to keep membranes flexible and synapses firing. It's as if the female brain's biochemical shield is stripped away. The lipid signature points us toward a deeper mechanism. The molecules most depleted in women with Alzheimer's are highly unsaturated, loaded with omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. Why would that matter? At the highest level, polyunsaturated fatty acids are the building blocks of a flexible, functional brain. They keep cell membranes fluid, allowing receptors to move and interact. They enable synaptic plasticity, the process by which neurons strengthen or weaken their connections. They even facilitate vesicle fusion and transport, the machinery that lets neurons release neurotransmitters. Strip those unsaturated fats away and the brain's membranes become stiffer, less adaptable, and slower to communicate. Think of it like a highway system. Unsaturated fatty acids are the asphalt that keeps the road smooth and flowing. Without them, the surface cracks, traffic jams build up, and eventually the system grinds down. The lipidomic data show that in women with Alzheimer's, that asphalt is missing, and the detours are more saturated fats, which make the roads brittle and clogged. This isn't just theoretical. The same unsaturated lipids that drop in women correlated directly with worse clinical outcomes. Higher neurofilament light, which is evidence of axonal damage, higher astrocytic inflammation, lower cognitive performance scores, which point to impaired cognition. The biology and the symptoms line up. Independent studies back this up. Lim and colleagues reported that cognitively healthy women carried higher levels of DHA-containing lipids than men, but that this advantage disappears in Alzheimer's. By the time the disease set in, men and women looked equally depleted, erasing what had been a female edge. Arnold et al. observed a similar sex-dependent pattern with other metabolites, amino acids like valine, glycine, and proline, but the strongest changes appeared in women carrying the ApoE4 allele. That allele doesn't just raise risk, it influences how much DHA is incorporated into the brain volume itself. The mechanistic suspects don't end there. One candidate is fatty acid desaturase 2, the rate-limiting enzyme responsible for turning shorter-chain fatty acids into long-chain omega-3s like DHA. If its activity falters, whether through age, estrogen loss, or genetic regulation, the result is fewer unsaturated lipids available to incorporate into cell membranes. Some exploratory data even suggests that variants in this enzyme track with the very lipids that decline in women with Alzheimer's. The bigger picture is this. Women may experience a double hit. First, the loss of estrogen after menopause slows the machinery that builds and distributes DHA, collapsing their seemingly natural advantage. And second, the presence of ApoE4 alters how DHA supports brain volume, amplifying risk. Together, these factors could set the stage for the lipid deficits uncovered in this study. So the pattern is consistent. Healthy women start with more DHA and omega-3 esterified lipids than men, but in Alzheimer's, those levels plummet and the sex difference disappears. Men stay steady, women collapse downward. It's a biochemical unraveling that tracks eerily well with epidemiology. Two-thirds of cases female, incidence spiking after 80, right around the time estrogen is long gone. Put another way, the lipidomics aren't just fingerprints, they may be the smoking gun. The female brain's unsaturated shield is stripped away, and the evidence suggests it's not random. It's mechanistically linked to the very molecules that keep neurons alive, adaptive, and connected. The evidence paints a compelling picture. Women with Alzheimer's are uniquely stripped of highly unsaturated omega-rich lipids, the mechanistic suspects, estrogen loss, impaired fatty acid desaturase 2 activity, ApoE4 modifying DHA use, line up with the crime scene. But what does this mean for the future? Where do we go from here? First, clinical trials must change course. Until now, omega-3 interventions have lumped men and women together. The lipidomic data argue that could be a mistake. 
women may be the group most likely to benefit, especially if intervention starts around menopause, when the natural DHA binding machinery falters. Timing also matters. Hormone replacement therapy illustrates the principle. Start too late and the window may close. Omega-3 interventions may be no different. A systematic review of 58 randomized control trials that was just published last week shows that shorter studies under one year and those enrolling cognitively healthy adults consistently found benefits in perceptual speed, visuospatial function, language, and primary memory. In contrast, trials in symptomatic Alzheimer's were largely null, reinforcing the idea that prevention, not late-stage treatment, is where the leverage may lie. The dose response matters too, and it isn't limitless. Modeling across thousands of participants shows the sweet spot for cognitive benefits between 1,000 and 2,500 milligrams of EPA plus DHA per day. Below that range, the signal was weak. Above it, benefits plateaued. For episodic memory, the curve even dipped at moderate doses before rebounding at higher levels, a U-shaped relationship. That suggests precision, not necessarily megadoses could be the path forward. The findings point toward mechanistic targets beyond diet. If the fatty acid to saturase 2 enzyme activity is impaired, could it be pharmacologically enhanced? If MFSD2A is the critical transporter shuttling DHA across the blood brain barrier, could therapies be designed to boost its activity? Even statins, by altering cholesterol flux, may indirectly impact lipid mediation. That's a line of evidence already hinted at in the case of carriers of ApoE4. And finally, the lipidomic fingerprint itself could become a biomarker. The collapse of unsaturated phospholipids and triglycerides in women with Alzheimer's might serve as an early warning sign. Long before memory tests fail, a blood panel could reveal whether a woman's biochemical shield is eroding. That opens the door to personalized prevention. Track omega-3 status, LDL profile, and in the future, specific phospholipid species as part of routine risk assessment. The case isn't closed, but what we've uncovered is a blueprint. Women appear to lose their omega-3 advantage, just as Alzheimer's risk climbs. For now, it's a lead worth following, and it points toward a future where prevention is more precise, and biology, not just lifespan, explains the imbalance. Alzheimer's has always been seen as a disease of plaques, tangles, and lost neurons, but the evidence we've uncovered suggests another layer, the silent collapse of a lipid shield, one that seems to matter most in women. This isn't just about living longer. It's about living with a different biology, one that depends on omega-3 reserves and falters when those reserves vanish. For women, especially after menopause, the loss of highly unsaturated lipids may be the missing link that tips the balance toward disease. It connects hormones, genetics, and diet in ways that change our understanding of risk, and it reframes prevention, not just a question of whether omega-3s help, but when, at what dose, and in whom. The mystery isn't solved, but the case has a new lead. Alzheimer's may not strike equally, and if we follow the biochemistry, we may finally begin to understand why. Until then, the omega-3 advantage is a story still being written. Until next time. Stay sharp and stay healthy.